Hi everyone, welcome back to the Mama For Her channel. My name is Jennifer. If you love a new vlog every Monday and Friday at 6pm, please hit the subscribe button. You will not miss out on any of the fun. Today's vlog is going to be a bit of a matter that can sometimes be a bit sensitive for people and that's to do with finances. So I'm talking about how you budget actually your household or family, money that comes in and what you spend it on. This sometimes can be a very stressful area for any mummies or daddies out there, for any grandparents, trying to make ends meet, trying to do the best and support your families. And hopefully these kind of tips and maybe some of the things I do in our family might be useful to you too. So. To get started, we have a budget spreadsheet. Now, this is something that I set about a couple of years ago now, where I'm, I like to be very much in control of what we're aiming for, what we're achieving in life. I feel I want to be different from maybe a lot of people in the world that seem to be just living month to month. I want to have some goals, I want to achieve great things in this one shot of life that I get. And that means the money that I earn, the money that my husband earns, I want that to go towards the best things for those around us and those we love the most. And for us, the only way to do that is to budget and put things in separate pots so that we can enjoy this journey and not be worrying about the day-to-day -day struggles. Um, when we started with a budget, what I did was I just got a normal spreadsheet and I'm going to kind of show you how to break down your budget to get started. But you just get your bank accounts open and you're just very honest with your spending. So usually... People, I find people come to budget when they've hit a kind of rock bottom. They just can't go on. They've used up their savings. They maybe have a lot of debt mounting up and they, they just can't do it anymore. The, some, there's been a critical event that says, do you know what? The way we're doing things is not the best way. We need to change what we're doing. So that didn't quite happen with us. But what I was intrigued by was actually, could we achieve some of these life goals and a bit, a bit better structure? to how we manage money. So what I did was, I got our bank account open. At the time, I had a separate bank account, so did my husband. We got a joint bank account. Both wages were going into that, and naturally, of course, all your expenses come out of those wages. To take it one step further, to try and manage actually what you're doing with that money, I then broke everything down into separate categories so that we were having a certain amount for food, a certain amount for petrol every month, and really, it's it's not to limit life, it's actually to kind of get more out of it that sometimes, especially with the age that we live in with Apple Pay, credit cards, debit cards, you know how easy it is just to rock into a shop, see whatever you fancy and put on a card. Because it's not real money or it doesn't feel like real money. And so I think I'm as guilty as anyone of feeling like that. that if it's on a credit card, ah, it'll be fine, it'll get solved. Next payday, next payday, it's going to come and get wiped off. I don't, I don't want to live my life always waiting for the next paycheck and so what we did was I went through a couple of budgets so that we had money for Christmas each year so that we had money for cars if we needed to get new tires or improvements money so that we could have some fun along this life journey so a little bit of money put aside each month that would be maybe to get a holiday once a year or maybe even just to be able to go out and take the family out every month we could be fun, maybe do something like the cinema or eat out and just not have to worry the same way. So this is how we budget and I'm going to talk you through exactly all the different categories we have in our budget. The kind of rough structure that we use. Maybe you'll find this really useful if you're starting out a budget and maybe you'll just take some tips along the way. So let's get started then. We are going to do a rough approximate budget for what a household might need. And um, this is just purely made up figures. I'm just going to use very kind of general terms. These are not my monthly budgets, but I want to get in and give you a working example and maybe one that you can use. So in our house, we have forms of income. Now you have to be very honest with yourself and list absolutely everything. So for example, if you have an income, your husband has an income, and then you also have a wage. You would list that down there as in your income pile. If you also get maybe tax credits, you could list that there. If you get child benefit, if you also maybe get spousal support, maybe child maintenance agreements, anything at all, you list it all there so that you know exactly how much money is coming into your banking accounts or into your possession every month. Then you also want to list 
all your outgoings. And this is just a rough outline of everything and then we're going to group them together. So for example, you would list absolutely everything to do with your home. This could be having a mortgage repayment if you want to make overpayments as well. That is every month you want to absolutely make overpayments you include them there. You would do your utility bills. So your gas, your electricity, your council tax, um, anything where it fundamentally comes down to the home to keep your lights on, to keep your home from being repossessed. If you have um, rent, of course, that also comes under there. Anything basic to secure that your family has a roof over their head. Then you also would look at how much you're spending on food and petrol, roughly. If you have any cars, you would look at how much it actually costs maybe to make repayments if you're paying up monthly for those and also future proofing any repairs that might come along generally. You then want to make sure you have any medical bills, for example, if you have private dental care to pay for, if you perhaps pay for your pres prescriptions, and we don't in Scotland, but if you have to do that, that would be included there. You would also list any debts that you that must be paid every month. Ideally, you want to be repaying those. Don't just meet the minimum terms. You want to be getting rid of those as quickly as you can. Um, and then we're a blended family, so we have things like our blended family expenses that are essential, um, such as child support. There's also travel costs associated with that as well. So if you've got those, basically anything that is an undisputable item that can't be taken off your budget that has to be paid for. As well as that, you then got to think about maybe some of the fun things you'd like to actually save for in future. So another key item that comes into expenditures would be actually saving up for Christmas and birthdays if you can. So that when they come around each year, it, you're not having to delve into your individual pots for food and petrol money or for your utility bills. You've got that and you've planned ahead. Christmas comes the same time every year so that it shouldn't take you by surprise. If you also want to make any regular savings because you want to achieve a goal, that's where you would write that down there. Um, if you've got travel costs, you have to make that could be doing due to your job it could also be due to if you're seeing members of your family or such like make sure it's all included there and finally it's really important in whatever way possible that you can assign some fun money to your life so that you and your family can actually enjoy this road you're on with the money you earn as you work towards any goals that you've set our personal family goal is actually to be debt free as quickly as we can whether or not that's possible um, we're certainly aiming for that so we know that once we've paid everything that is critical that comes out of our wages these are the next areas that have to be and in order of importance for us would be putting something by for Christmas and birthdays so that at least there was fun that occurs on those days then we have travel costs. My husband has travel costs and we have travel costs to see our blended family. So that's an essential item for us. And then it would be savings and then hopefully to get some fun money along the way. We would Fun money for us would include going on a wee holiday if we could. But for us, we've got quite an ambitious goal that we want to achieve. And so we're very focused on making sure if we've got a lot of these boxes ticked, our life is really good and really happy anyway. And hopefully we would have a bit of pocket money and a bit of fun money for the family as well. When you are thinking of fun money, please be realistic. If you're a person who really enjoys being able to get a few new clothes every month, perhaps treat yourself to some new skincare product, make sure you do not focus too much on achieving goals and you forget to actually give yourself some freedom along the way. It's really important and also means that you don't resent working towards this goal because this goal could be 10, 15, 20 years away. You can't live a life completely dedicated to only that. You've got to make sure that you and your family are having fun. Next thing we want to do is let's actually set some realistic financial goals for ourselves. And um, 
in life, sometimes you find that when you make them physical and tangible, you actually give them proper monetary values that you're working towards, that's when they really start to happen and you actually see how you're achieving it. The, an obvious goal might be, well, let's actually have an emergency fund so that if anyone lost their job or both of you lost your job in your household, that you could live for X amount of months quite happily and the, the mortgage should still be paid, your rent would still be paid, you'd still have a roof over your head before you, you found it a bit tighter. So that could easily be a goal and that would be make sure all your utility bills are paid, you've got food money, you've got petrol money. Problem is when you hit that, you'll then want another goal. Well, maybe your goal could be, let's get the home deposit and let's actually buy a new house. So find out how much your home costs that you would like. Let's give an example of like 100,000 and find out exactly how much deposit you would need to put down. That's your goal. And then from that, what you would do is look at your average monthly savings that you're putting by and then know it's going to take you X amount of months or X amount of years to achieve that goal and write it down. So let's, for example, say we're going to achieve our deposit goal in two years. A great way of actually making that goal real and something exciting to work to to work towards would actually to be display it somewhere, maybe in the kitchen, maybe in the living room. Have that goal printed very clearly and print also how you're doing in terms of towards that goal. So for example, your first month, it might be that you've saved £100 towards that £10,000. Then the next month that you can write £200 and just keep a physical track of how well you're doing. Also what will happen is the more times you see it, the more times you'll be actually focused on it during the month. So maybe if you are tempted to purchase things that aren't essential, it might just make you rethink and say actually I might give the household back £50 because I want to achieve this goal a little bit quicker. With anything though of course, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And that's all that a budget is really about, is making sure that you are in full control of what you're working so hard for on a normal day-to-day -day life, why you might be leaving your children in childcare for a couple of hours a day to work, if you're perhaps working full time and you've made that choice. Everything is about being accountable and choosing to do what you want to do because it's all for a greater purpose. So my first top tip would be when you're starting a budget, be realistic. There is absolutely no point in giving yourself a budget with your food of say £50 a month. If, if you can live on £50 a month, I need you in my house because I'm feeding two hungry boys and a hungry husband and sometimes that number goes up to five hungry boys when we have um, the, our full blended family together. So if, at £50 just wouldn't cut it for a whole month for us. But Look at what your past spend is. So look at the, when you start to budget, refer to the month before. If that was kind of a normal month, nothing crazy happening, that's okay. Look at how much you spent on food. Okay, it was maybe X pounds every week. And you go, right, okay, was a lot of that frivolous or was that just a good solid week? Okay, that was quite okay. That's gonna be my budget then. Let's say 30 pounds a week, that's too low. If maybe if you were only one person, that'd be all right. But you know, 30 pounds a week, that's my budget. So a month, or how often you get paid, times by the number of, number of weeks. If you're not realistic with your budgets, then what you'll find is the money that you want to use for other places, like holidays, like for Christmas, like even thinking about future financial goals of paying off your house, paying off your mortgage, buying a house, you're not going to achieve them. And every time you don't achieve your milestone of putting by X amount of pounds into savings or X amount for Christmas, it's going to be like a kick in the teeth and what you want to feel is all those great positive highs from actually changing the way you deal with money. So whatever you do, try and give yourself the best chance from the word go. My next top tip would be have some fun along the journey. Make sure when you are budgeting that you give yourself even a tiny amount of play money and what I mean by that is you know give yourself if you can even only afford a five or a ten or a month to go out as a family to the cinema or to do a picnic or you know join the national trust some things that you can go for free every month to get outside and have fun together as a family don't think that if you start budgeting and you start looking after your money that that means you'll never have or you're not allowed fun because you're always thinking of the end goal put some fun in your life because that way that money will be your just your pure enjoyment money and it won't matter if you want to spend on 
a thousand ready made bags of sweets or if you want to save it up and get a luxury car it's your money enjoy it my next top tip would be review your budget at least every three to four months if not every month this is something i do and what i find is from month to month it can vary for example we have a lot of birthdays over like the september october time so for us i need to kind of put in a little bit extra money to have in our fun money or wherever to actually cover for those birthday gifts. It's not okay just to assume that I'll get by by using the food budget or the petrol budget because you'll just end up using up those budgets for things that aren't really what they're intended for. So absolutely, think about when you're going to need that little bit extra money. You're going to need it probably at Christmas. You're going to need it maybe when the kids are off on summer holiday. Think about that, think strategy forward, and then nothing will take you by surprise. My last top tip would be commit now to give any future earnings you earn a percentage of that back to savings. So don't look at any pay increases and go, oh well, we need to keep the same budget for the next 20 years fixed amounts, you get a fiver pocket money, you get a fiver food budget. Have some fun with the fact you're achieving great things in your life and moving up the career ladder and getting rewarded for being good in that part of your life. We've committed to give a certain amount percentage to savings, but also a certain percentage goes to the fun money, to maybe our pocket money as well. So ultimately, our benefits, our rewards are through hard work. Hope you've enjoyed today's vlog. Please be sure to subscribe if you enjoy a vlog every Monday and Friday at 6pm. I have a really strong feeling the next couple of vlogs might be to do with Halloween and autumn things, so it won't be to miss. And please be sure that you hit the subscribe button. Thanks for now.